I was thinking we should change the name of this to Skin Box and I'll just do it naked. Uh, no, no. That was a great idea for a minute there, but I think I've been drinking a little bit. This is the inbox. <laughs> Only if it's a radio show. <laughs> and even then. <laughs> even then, depends on. <laughs> Only in the dark. <laughs> yeah, this will turn into Howard Stern so fast. We got some guy over here playing like naked uh, horseshoes. That sounds vaguely like a tree in the wood. A tree falls in the woods. It's like, if Logan is naked and the room is dark, is Logan really naked? The that sounds like yes. quantum physics. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Logan's in a superposition of both clothed and unclothed <laughs> until he is observed and must collapse into one of the states. <laughs> Depends on who's looking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. So we record two inboxes in a row, so as you can see, we've got a head start on you guys, so go ahead and start drinking. I'm drinking the Mui and Mianda. Music and Mayonnaise beer? Yeah, the... the <laughs> you guys may recall the Music and Mayonnaise beer from music the Music and Mayonnaise <laughs> from the Netherlands. I am so sorry, everyone in the Netherlands. I Might be time for a new prescription for me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys at home, probably in 1080p, and it's like, wow, he's, he, he can't read that? He must be blind. We have a new uh, thing that we're doing now. Instead of sending emails to me... You go and you post them on techsyndicate.com. It's easier for everybody. These are public emails, so a lot of times, if you're asking something simple like, hey, uh, there's a, a hornet in my house, how do I kill it? One of the guys on the forum might be able to answer that, and maybe I don't need to answer that. Maybe it would be funny if I answered that, so maybe someone on the forum will answer it, and I'll answer it too. Whatever. <clears throat> so anyway, we're jumping onto the forum now to answer a few more questions. From uh, Devin. When's the next album coming out? That's the subject. Hey, Logan. You plan on releasing the next album into the wild? Ah, oh, yes, the next Vihander has been seen in the wild. Maybe a month <laughs> or so. <laughs> the way you're describing that, I just got pictures Pokemon. in my head of like there's some sort of bloodletting going oh. on in the background <laughs> that has to be done to make it not eat the villagers or whatever. I don't know where that comes from, but I like it. Hmm, that's a good idea. Well, I what I need to do now is I need to finish up like two or three songs. I think the 90% of the song is done. And then I just need to put a tail end on it. And uh, then we need to finish the artwork. We're going to produce some really large artwork and maybe even sell uh, you know, a, a large print or a large whatever drawing or painting or whatever the artist is going to do. We might actually sell like an original art piece with the signature and everything. I don't know. And I need a good name for it. So I'm thinking of all those three things. But by and large, it's almost finished. And uh, you guys can hear a little sample. Next one is from Lock Hody. Do you guys have any servers for any game? Do you guys have any servers for any game, such as Team Fortress 2? Also, are they public, and what are they? We have a few answers in here, but the one I want to highlight is Nate's answer. Uh, we should have this live by the time this video comes out because we're recording this in the past, as we do. Uh, Nate is in charge of the servers now. I'm not sure if we'll have Team Fortress 2, probably some chivalry. Rise of the Triad is going to be big on our server, and it's just going to be game.techsyndicate.com. But hop on the website. Uh, all that information will be there. And yes, we will have some forums. And we may even have some unofficial forums for Minecraft and other games like that. Arma 3. Arma 3, yes, when that comes out. We had Arma 2 for a while. That was a lot of fun. And then we'll probably also have the standalone DayZ because a lot of people are playing that. So let us know what you like as well. Just post it over there on the, on the forum. Uh, next question is from Crimson. And he wants to know if Daggerfall has ever been made available in HD. Uh, you guys can see the question on the screen here. Um, came from watching this video. We're not going to click on that. That's scary stuff there, but Terra is cool, so if you're watching this, I don't know if you are. Hi, how are you? I hope everything's good. Th those were dark times, man. <laughs> lived under the stairs, and it was hot every day, and the, uh, it was humid. Have you ever heard of someone reconstructing Daggerfall to have HD textures like Skyrim, in addition to adding more complex spells, dungeons, physics, characters, and so on? If so, I would, be, I would buy it immediately. Please let me know if you have heard anything concerning this. And I read this knowing that this has not been done, at least... I don't think it's been done, but I would really like this to happen because Daggerfall, it, it's, the game is huge. It's probably the biggest, I think it is the biggest game world ever created, like 57,000 square kilometers. That is huge. There are people working on this kind of a project, but we honestly don't know anything about it. You can Google Dagger XL for one project and Realm 667 for another project. So, huh, there you have that. I do want to. You say Daggerfall is one of your favorite games, and um, so that means you like the Elder Scrolls games. I want to point you over to um, 
a different game. It's for, um, there's, there's a mod for Morrowind, there was a mod for Oblivion, and there's going to be an upcoming mod for Skyrim. Uh, but there's a team in Germany making something called Enderall. Look at that at Skyrim, and then look at um, uh, the other games that they've made, the other mods that they've made. I like those games better than the Elder Scrolls games. They're nerdier, they're more hardcore, and they're just a ton of fun. And they're also a bit more traditional if you like traditional RPGs as far as the XP system goes. So check those out. Okay, now we're going to go back to some standard questions, and like this will probably be the last time that we ever do this. No more questions from my inbox, but... They'll be called from the forums. Yep, all from the forums from now on. But we still have a few left over from the inbox, so let's do them. Question. How long have you known Wendell? <laughs> it's from Ryan. <laughs> let's just say over a decade. Should we tell him what, what was going on back in the day? No, nah, well, I mean... It's kind of, it's fun. Since the beginning of time, pretty much. I remember killing a, a gigantic tarantula in your room. Was that the name? Didn't it belong to the neighbors or something? Yes. Was it? <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but that was really scary. I don't like spiders, and I woke up and there was a gigantic tarantula in your room. We were like, we're like 13 years old or something, 14 years old, maybe I, at the most. I remember we killed it with an Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> And it was like, I mean, it covered the whole cover of the Britannica when it was squished. Oh, it like went all over the walls, too. Yeah, it was yeah, like, it was, it's like, how did this happen? And then the neighbor came by like, you see my tarantula? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I don't know what they were doing with the tarantula, but I mean, it just, it was, like, have you seen my pre pet black bear? <laughs> it's running around here somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, I've got a black bear behind my back dead, you know, like, we're going to make stew out of this later. Um, and you're you're sitting there, like, analyzing it. I don't believe this is indigenous. And I'm just like, kill it, kill it with Britannica. <laughs> that was really terrifying. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of fun back then. Um, <laughs> back when things didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, a simpler time. College Inquiry from Rami. Hello, I have a few questions about the IT field. First of all, what IT major at college uh, is best to get into? Software development, network management, or computer engineering? Mostly aiming for a bachelor's degree. Let me scroll over. Mostly aiming for a bachelor's degree. Second, what field in IT has the best career opportunities? Good salary, good employment rate, flexibility. Third, I hear from a lot of people that it's incredibly competitive in the IT field because of all the outsourcing from Asia. I'm planning on working in the U.S. or Canada. Would this be true or false? All right. To start off with the first one. Um, he wants to know what major in college, development, network management, or computer engineering would be best to get into. I and recommend pure computer science. Just because that, that's more of a generic thing. You don't have a, a really good knowledge base as far as, like, everything goes. It tends now, to be at this least... This is more of your question, yeah. Well, it, it tends to be that if you're getting a Bachelor of Science that you have to do some other science field at least like the non-majors version of that science. And what that means is that you take science classes like physics or chemistry or biology or whatever, like as if that was one of your majors up to a point. You know, not all the classes, obviously. You're not double majoring. But that gives you a really good sort of, let's call it, grounding in reality. I did physics, so that was a lot of fun. I actually minored in physics. Um, so, you know, that, that was a little beyond sort of the requirements, but it was a lot of fun to actually built stuff in the lab like we built a an nmr machine for example and so it was like oh this is really cool and i was able to write software to do things and so that was a lot of fun but pure computer science by itself is completely useless like if you learn pure computer science and you do not have any context in which to put your knowledge you're not going to pick up as much stuff and so it's not going to be as useful to you computer science is like learning english or russian or french or something it's it is not it's a tool to learn other things. It is not by itself very valuable unless you put it in the context of other learning. Second, what field in IT has the best career opportunities? Um, he wants to know what has good salary, employment rate, flexibility. And I want to jump in here before we get to the hard st statistics because there are hard statistics on this. However, if you do something and you're unhappy, what does it matter? You need to find out what makes you tick. You know, which field makes you the happiest? Do you like working for, you know, a marketing company as a code monkey? Do you want to work, do you like building computers all day long? Those are two very different fields. You know, like if you're going to be like designing and building computers or if you're going to be like writing code or do you want to make Android games? You know, what makes you happy? Look at that before you look at the salary because you're going to want to kill yourself. And what good is it if you have $100,000 if you still want to kill yourself at the end of the day? Now, I'll let you take over. And the best thing, the best advice that we can give you in this 
is that you need to aim for a Zen-like understanding of whatever field that you have. You need to always be respectful and mindful of whatever trade or profession or sect of computer science or computer engineering or computer hardware or information technology that you pick up. And what we mean by that is that you need to always look at it as, oh, I can always learn something from this. Oh, I can always, you know, treat a new context. Why is this the way this is? If you're always asking why this is the way this is, you will never have any problem finding a job in this field. All right, the third question has to do with the outsourcing problem uh, as far as making it more difficult to find employment. Is that true or false? It's true and false at the same time. There are plenty of jobs that can be done here, and everyone needs people here to work with teams there. It's sort of a, you have you have all these things. I mean, you, you use in both, work, right? Yeah, in working with Fortune 500 companies, it's really been an interesting paradox because a lot of their program managers want graduates from American universities that have software engineering experience, but they're giving all the low-level software engineering tasks to people in other countries. And so people over there would be promoted to software engineering ranks, but there are not mechanisms that exist, you know, H-1B visas and things like that, to do that. And so it's really an interesting paradox because these companies, when they want, you know, a code monkey it's already going overseas. They want project managers. And nobody can project manage out of college. That's just crazy. And you can't really get it with a graduate degree either. So it is kind of a catch-22 because businesses don't understand that. And very large companies don't understand that that's what they're doing. They're, they're making an impossible requirement. But if you're reverent of what you're learning and you learn why, and you're always fascinated by what you do, you're going to be you know, head and shoulders ahead of everybody else. You're going to be head and shoulders ahead of everybody in other countries and outsourcing thing like things like that. So I think you'll probably be fine. I want to end it with my little message about, uh, you mentioned Zen, but my little message about balance. Make sure you like what you're doing again. Make sure you stay balanced. If you stay locked in a room all day doing the same thing, you'll go crazy. Whatever it is, just make sure you have balance. And, you know, be cognizant of those things. That's my advice. That's what keeps me from going insane. Yeah, you can definitely find balance in, and I mean, IT can be really stressful. It's like, oh, you know, you got to fly coast to coast because you're the only guy that understands, you know, Esoteric Widget 37. <laughs> so if you want I love, that. I love Esoteric Widget 37. <laughs> you know, that's how it can be that way. Or if, you know, you want to take it easy and, you know, manage like a school network or something like that, you know, you can do that too. The whole, the jobs run the gamut. Next question is from CDNA. Bonjour from France. Logan and the team love the videos. You guys do a lot of builds for certain budget, uh, which is great and helpful, but you never take into consideration the rest of the PC. By that I mean the screen, keyboard, mice, OS, headset or speakers. I think this could be quite helpful for people that want to build computers like me, and it would give them an idea of what price to put compared to the price of the rig itself. I know it mostly comes down to personal preference, but if you do a $500 rig, uh, there's not much preference to include. The main choice is 1080p or 720p monitor. Keep up the good work, CDNA. Okay, you just hit on it there. It is personal preference with all these peripherals, and a lot of it is uh, something that's going to carry you over from one PC to the next. A lot of times I think that people already have the core components or the core peripherals. They have a mouse, keyboard, headset. Let's hope they do. Now, what we can do to help, uh, I do not think that you know telling people what OS, what mouse, and what keyboard to get with any given rig is the best way to do this. I think the best way to do this would be to make separate buyer's guides in different um, categories because, I mean, input devices, that's a big deal. Like Some people like clicky keyboards. Some people do not like clicky keyboards. So maybe we should do a tutorial on what the best clicky keyboards are. <laughs> some people like membrane keyboards. I've been using the same keyboard for 20 years. IBM Model M. We've got yeah. one over there, too. It's awesome. <laughs> Some people like optical mice, some people like laser mice, some people like 8200 DPI mice, some people like 2000 DPI. So you really cannot include that in into a build. You can't. I'm sorry. I like I know it's you're trying to keep things in under, you know, a certain budget, but it is just so subjective that it would be impossible to include those things. And some people are going to be using Windows. Some people are going to be using um, you know, Linux. And who Hackintosh. am I to tell them what's that? <laughs> Hackintosh. Yeah, some, people, some people are going to be building the Hackintoshes with Gigabyte motherboards. <laughs> who am I to tell them what OS they should use? What I'm going to tell them is here's a great bundle of parts that I think would work uh, really well for people who are in the market for a $500 gaming rig or a $800 editing PC. Well, you really got to separate the peripherals too because you know, the monitor that you get and the keyboard and the mouse typically will outlive the machine. Like we have, I, well, we have 24 inch monitors that we bought in 2006 that we're still using 
that are fine. And you've upgraded your machine three times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not my main monitor anymore, but they're still very usable. So just continue to watch our reviews. Um, I've got a ton of mice. I, I bought like 15 different mice, and they're all like $10 gaming mice. So I'm going to do like a little roundup, as they call them, roundups. Do a mouse roundup. So maybe we'll start doing some stuff like that where we put several different mice in the same video together uh, in a certain category and let you guys see what all of them are and then pick the best one. All right. Uh, the next question is from Mike in Britland. <laughs> or he says Britland. I'm just emailing you to say I'm a big fan of the show. Keep fighting the good fight. I have two questions. If that's cool, homie. I can't. I, how do you say homie with a British accent? Homie. Very good, homie. Homie. Homeboy. <laughs> come, come around my house, homeboy. That's very London. Let's go for like... Cockney. I can't Essex do. or something. <laughs> now you want me to just narrow down my <laughs> accent to a block or something. Like you just do... You know, like, Upper East from this block to this block. That accent only, no. What about Glasgow? <laughs> Glasgow, eh? <laughs> I have two questions, if that's cool, homie. I can't do it. I'm very confused about the whole Bitcoin thing. Like, We're going to get so much hate mail. Yeah, we don't even know. <laughs> Americans should shut up with their fake accents and jump off a bridge into porridge. England, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, we don't know what those are. Those are all the same. No, no, no. <laughs> and no. Ireland is always part of the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very confused about the whole Bitcoin thing. Could you please explain it to me in the simplest forms? I understand that it is a currency, uh, but I am unsure about mining it and how it's used, et cetera, et cetera. There's a video. Yep, video. TechSyndicate.com forward slash Bitcoin. Yep. Just go there and check out that video that will do a better job than I can do. And there's like graphics on the screen. People love graphics on the screen. <clears throat> <laughs> if we email John Hurt, perhaps he'll narrate it for you. <laughs> I understand you're a big metal fan like me. Uh, what is your favorite band, and are you a thrash metal fan? You know, I'm not a big thrash metal fan, but I do like Solosis from uh, the UK. They're really good, and they're kind of thrashy. You know what? Uh, hop in the forum and post it in there, and I will give you a list of all my favorite bands. And let's narrow it down. I'll, I'll, send, I'll even send you my favorite thrash metal bands, and the number is few of thrash metal bands that I listen to. Thanks for your time, and I'm sending you a hug all the way from Britain land. Crumpets, tea, cricket to the queen. I thought I'd embrace my stereotype. Much love, Mike. Well, jolly good tally-ho. Pip, pip. <laughs> pip, pip, y'all. <laughs> pip, pip, y'all. Let's bring that into Kentucky. Some tea. We got a queen in Kentucky somewhere, don't we? <laughs> We've got Versailles. <laughs> I just poured beer on myself because you said that. <laughs> That's France, though. I didn't, didn't even yeah, get the continent right. Okay, yeah, in, in Kentucky, we have London, Kentucky, and we have Versailles. Not Versailles. It's spelled Versailles, but it's Versailles. Everyone, if you, like, my friends came here from, like, New York, and they're like, oh, that's cool. You, let's go to Versailles. And everyone's like, what? You mean <laughs> Versailles? <laughs> we laugh, but it's so sad. I think it was supposed to be Versailles originally. There's also a Paris, Kentucky. What, what's going on in this place? Let's put every place from Europe in the same state, and it'll look nothing like it, because it's kind of ugly. I think it's like the Vikings did with Greenland, hoping that people would move there. Except the names have 74 letters. <laughs> <laughs> the names are all Mui, Medaglingli, and Mayonnaise. Music and Mayonnaise. Music and Mayonnaise, yes. So, Music and Mayonnaise, I love you guys. Subscribe down there. Questions go on the forum. There's a link in the description. Bye.